So welcome to No Shame. Um, this week we had some UFC on, which was pretty good. One of the only sporting events going on in the world. Um, to see the amount of people that checked in on on, on the event, um, or P- sports stars from other events, they must have been looking at this saying, "You know what? That's a bit of hope because uh, while everyone is 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 off and doing their thing, um, and some people are telling people, oh well." It's, you got to do this, you got to do that. They forget that that fighters earn their money through fighting, and that's how it works. So if they don't fight, they don't eat, and it's not always a situation where somebody um, has been successful that they have a lot of money in reserve either. Because uh, when they earn that money, they use that money um, to live as well. So as they go on, that money gets spent. I've been thinking about fighters through this because I know that the 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 gap if you fight two times a year, three times a year. It's still okay money to be getting by. You're not. You're, you're definitely not a millionaire. But um, if this year goes by where nobody's fighting and then somebody misses a fight next year, um, I could see people finding it falling into some financial difficulties, which is uh, which is pretty sad considering um, they're at the highest level of the world now. You know now, and it's and it's not it's not anybody's fault. It's that's how the game works. You have to you have to be the person. You have to bring the numbers, and and that's how the dough comes in. That's the that's the road they choose, as they say. Um, so today we have P.T. Carroll coming on just to chat with us as the the sports correspondent for No Shame. Um, a bit of banter with P.T. P.T.'s P.T.'s a good man. He's been here. He's probably been on the ground since the start of uh, MMA. I think he's one of the 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 original uh, MMA journalists. Um, and he's he's done it at the highest of the game now. But um. It's gonna be great to bounce some fights off of him. That was uh, that was on the other night, and um, we had Justin Gaethje. Um, uh, the Justin Gaethje. Fo- we had the Justin Gaethje fight. What's his name? Bladen, the zombie. I keep forgetting his name. And anyway, you know who I'm on about. Um, we had Donald Cerrone back as well, and uh, Henry Cejudo and uh, Dominic Cruz, which was a fight I was dying to watch. Uh, so I'm gonna get PT on, and we're gonna break down some of this. This will be a better banter. Peasy Carroll. Somebody in here do that, man. Oh, I'm telling you, it's getting pretty wild. I'm starting to think about the old black market job now at the minute. How about you? <laughs> Flowing it. Hard as shooting in a barber in your garden. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Oh, man. Oh, man. It's we rough. Have, we literally, we have got the front of my hair stapled to the back of my shoulders. <laughs> 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 Yeah, man, my, my hair is shitty. It just it, it, nothing ever happens with it, so it's it's gonna be a disaster. By July, it's gonna be an absolute disaster. It'll be like some sort of a Celtic afro, but we'll deal with it whatever way it comes, buddy. You know yourself. I got a hire a film crew to go around to all the barbers. I have, but this is over. You can imagine the queues outside, like Neanderthal. Do you know, I, I was talking. Do you know Jack Hamanson, the middleweight UFC middleweight? Yeah, yeah. Um, he he um. He told me that the barbers opened up two weeks ago in Norway. They opened up or whatever, and he said there was a three-month wait list to get their hair cut. <laughs> Lads are like paying for spots in the line and all to try and get their stuff done quicker and everything. It's madness. I seen a young yesterday in my house in the state walking up the road, and I'm not messing. It reminded me of when we were kids. Right? He was fixing... You know, fixing the sides of his hair, he was right. Like, look at me when your mother told you, Can I get me hair cut? She's like, Nah, there's two more weeks on that. <laughs> and he was literally like gluing his locks to the side of his face. It reminded me of back in the 90s where you were like, Can't wait till two weeks, boys, and now get a hair cut. You know I, mean? I, I never got my hair cut for ages. My ma my, my used to have um, a woman that came around to our house to cut her hair, so it would be cheaper to get her hair cut by her, so that's what we did for years. I didn't even know what to do. I was going to the barber when I was about 14, and I was going, I didn't know what to ask for here. <laughs> 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 did a little comb over for years. Now, Dustin one gives a shot back and so he'd leave a feather on the fringe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, so, pretty cool to have some UFC back this week, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, it felt huge when it was on. The amount of people coming through and talking about it, whether it was um, when it when it started to happen, especially when the pay per view started, I thought it was crazy. It felt like um, big personalities from every sport were kind of very happy to see people competing again. And um, and for the fighters, I knew it was huge for them to get out there. And um, I know there was a lot of controversy about it, but the fighters were one hundred percent always wanted to do it. So uh, from that point of view, I guess. You know, if they wanted to do it, um, they should be allowed to earn money like everybody else, as far as I'm concerned. Because um, I've only been saying that because the last few weeks, that's what I've been, just kind of observing and then coming in here and just trying to, like, I don't know, 
break up a few rows on Facebook uh, without, being, yeah. without getting into the comment section with them because uh, that's basically what's been going on. We're in a situation where I don't, people need to mind their business. Do you know what I mean? In a certain amount of way because everybody's fighting for something bigger than uh, just an opinion on Facebook. They're fighting for their families, their jobs, their careers, their, their, their businesses, all these type of things where it's like, I think people need to kind of like step back a little bit now and, and not be jumping in as much as... Um, I think I've seen that happening because um, with the UFC, obviously, like, if you don't fight, you don't eat. <laughs> I don't think people see this. So, like, um, my, my, my thoughts have been on that side, like, especially with um, a lot of the rosters. So, um, some of the rosters that are not out there that are not still competing. So, you'll, you'll have uh, you have many guys signed to Bellator, uh, guys like KSW, uh, World Fight Championships and stuff like that. Um, there's no wage there. And I don't think people that, like, would be giving out about the sport are saying that, like they're probably in their war, instead in their jobs, you know what I mean? And not realizing that this is not just a sport to get in there and box each other. You know what I mean? It's a, it's your job. Yeah, and, and like I did, I think it kind of does when you when you take a look at the whole thing as a whole. Um, I think it does kind of highlight the need for fighters to be paid more money to for fighters to be together, have some type of collective bargaining like the Premier League players have against the Premier League or the NBA players, the NFL, all this kind of stuff. Um, because I just, w- when you listen to the, the football players talking and the NBA players, they're in no great rush to come back, right? They're like, you know, until everything's safe, until absolute everyone that attends this event is safe, I'm not willing to go back yet. And it's been very different with the, the UFC fighters. And I feel a big part of that is because they don't earn as much money they, we know that the UFC take a far bigger chunk of of the profits than these other organize, organizations do. So we feel like if there was something in place where these fighters could be paid, um, you know, which could be something that they'd be able to collectively bargain for in a union, maybe they wouldn't be trying to to go in there and compete as much. But again, these are all ifs and buts. We we don't know that for sure, Paddy. Well, that, and that is you don't know what's going on behind the thing. But you just because sometimes you can make a comment on it, and that stuff can happen as well, and you're like. Um, you're like, all right, good, because that's what I was fighting for. <laughs> that's yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where I said <laughs> like, How dare you say that? It's already happening. You're like, like Delhi, good, I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> there has been more, though. It's, I mean, for the MMA online, I think the last month has been an absolute dumpster for her. Like, there's been just rows, as you said, everywhere. I'm barely on the shit now. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm like putting out fires left, right, and center every time. <laughs> you know, and if you know someone, people are getting on, you're going, what's he fucking saying? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> do you know what? I, I, I might have getting a new level of that in this, you know, like in a way. <laughs> yeah. not, and I think, I think even when, when everybody comes out, is everybody is going to be in a new little kind of like, do you know what? Get that phone, get it away from me, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because people are just stuck to their screens that days. Now, we've been sticking away in the drawer, trying to only do a few hours a day. And there was a time where I was like, like I don't know, I think all the information's coming at me. You're trying to figure it out. You're trying to like, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Paddy, you're not going to sort this out. You're not going to figure this stuff out. This stuff so had to just slowly unwind itself, you know what I mean? And, uh, and, and, and show what's actually happening. So um, I was thinking about you here before we came on to do this today, and I was like, if Paddy Hewlin could have fought on that card, and uh, he absolutely would have. He would have fucking loved it. He didn't like going to the US that much, but he would have been all over that one. <laughs> and do you know what the mad thing is? When I'm seeing this all unraveling, I'm like, put me in! Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they haven't fought in years, but when you're looking at the boys, some boys are just throwing off the jacket and just having a go, and it's great. It's great to see it, like, you know? It's, um, did you like uh, Bryce Mitchell last night? I'd say you were loving that that young fella. Did you see that the, on the prelims? He was absolutely devastating. You like, I mean, he, the prelims. Yeah, he was unbelievable. You should watch it. It was um, it was just all grappling. There was barely any punches landed. And uh, like Charlie, do you remember Ch- Charles uh, Rosie? He fought in the same card as you in Boston once. He's yes. a featherweight. For yeah. him, he's a black belt, Liborio black belt man. He's unbelievable. But your man Bryce Mitchell, every time he passed a half guard, he had an arm triangle on. Like he must have him in. 15 arm triangles and about 10 twisters over the 15 minutes. It was absolutely mental. Now, there was no finish. Defensively, Rosa was brilliant, but it was just like, I was thinking you would love that fight, so you have to check that one out. Is he a 10 planet black belt? No, uh, I'm not too sure where Mitchell is from. He's got a huge fan base. I said something last night before the fight, like, oh, Charlie Rose, uh, Rose is very good, so, you know, this would be a good test for him. And I'd love to be, oh, what are you talking about? 
this guy Mitchell's a beast. I was like, all right, sorry. And it turns out he is, so fair enough, lads. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, you know, like, like, you'll have people attacking you and you'll be like, why was you saying? We hope he is a beast. He is a beast. <laughs> he's a beast. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? It's, um, yeah. But there was some class for weeks last night. Start on um, say the Donald Cerrone. Um, we start from there. I watched uh, the Carla um, Esparza and um, for as well. Oh, uh, Patty Hottie and Waters as well. Um, so that that's what I watched up from. But um, I think the Donald Cerrone fight. Um, Matt seen Donald Cerrone, and I was like, he can't be on the card. You have to give it fair play to him. Yeah, man, unbelievable. Did you see his eye? It seems like that eye is in a bad way now after that. Uh, McGregor and Ferguson back to back. His eye just seems to explode now on contact every time it gets, like, you know, a bit of contact. Yeah. Did you ever find out, like, a recurring injury? Like, I mean, if you got a particularly bad bang in it, it kind of swells up a lot easier the next time if it gets smacked. Is, is that common enough? I, I found, I just saw, his, Joe Rogan was talking about it as well. You know, from the damage Connor did and the, the damage Ferguson did, his eye just seemed to swell up nearly immediately as soon as Pettis hit it in the first. Yeah, I think I think any damage to your face like that, like we're looking at it like you get a black eye and then it recovers, it's like, but in real life, like a black eye in, in the jungle is like, like, I'm not going to get a black eye again. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like in that point, <laughs> where as humans, we're going straight back in. It's like, yeah, but it's eight weeks, it's not there anymore. But like, if you look under the surface, the body still remembers, you know? And and if you're not recovered, I'd say you get a smack in the same way, the body's like, there you go. There's the double, double big black eye for you. Do you know what I mean? It's amazing though, 15 years, 15 years he's in the UFC and that's the first time he's ever lost four fights consecutively. Like that's, well, 15 years between the, I think it's WC and UFC, so top flight and that's the first time he's lost four fights in a row. But I mean, look at the, look at the caliber of fighters that he's met over the last four fights. I mean, it's, it's hardly shameful, but he's, he still put it in there last night. Like I saw a lot of people had that fight scored for him. What did you think? Um, we actually had um, Pettis to knock him out, to be honest. I thought that he wouldn't have been there probably with the with, with after being getting shucked up and and uh, and taking them shots from Connor as well, you know what I mean? But it goes to show with those like um, how good Connor actually is. Because when we see these little glimpses of people, like, and you're talking about like somebody that's held a title in there as well. So um, with uh, Pettis, you know what I mean, going on him as well. And Pettis, Pettis can fight, you know what I mean? He's been there a long time. He's not like, it wasn't like he was falling from Connor to, to a fight where it was like, wait. Well, Will help him up again. Like Pez is a, this is a scrap. Former right? champion. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And and but you, you see when like I see, I think Connor would go through Pettis as well. To be honest, um, I don't, I don't, I, I went on a win with Donald Cerrone, and I'd say to be honest, I remember being in a room with Donald Cerrone and Connor and all. We were in Boston at that time. I said it to Connor when he was in training before he was fighting uh, Cerrone as well, and um. You could just feel this nervous energy off. Um, it was like you know when your teacher wasn't in in school or something like that, and you had to, <laughs> and you had to go to another class. But it was a few, <laughs> there was a few roofings in that one. You know what I mean? And you're sitting there in the roofings of a whole ninja or something like that. No, we was the roofing, so we wouldn't understand what it was like. To, that's what I'm trying to say. And that's what I felt like when Donald Cerrone was there. He was, he could feel this nervous energy off him. PT, I could. And he, there's actually a video of it. He comes in and he's like, "There's only one car." I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Car's like, what? We don't know you like that, you know. And he's like, he's shook in a way. He was like, he was shaking. And we just knew when that fight was called. I was like, when Connor starts hitting him, he's just gonna. He's just got to, like, the panic is going to take over. He's not going to be able to just float away and fight, you know what I mean? And you could see, though, I think last night was about um, getting in there and being, like, like just wanting to swim, if you must, you know what I mean? I just want to go, but I'm just not dealing with all of this world craving on top of me. I think he was, like, one of the winners of last night, McGregor, in a way, because uh, I know he wasn't fighting, but just the way things panned out, um, as you say, like, that that's what I was thinking about as soon as that Cerrone fight ended. The guy was like... Jesus, Connor ran through this lad, you know, a few months ago. Um, I expected Connor to win that fight, but when you look at that, like that's championship level with, with Pettis there as well. You know what I mean? And that's very, very impressive to me. And the fact that Gaethje wins the main event against Ferguson. I felt that Ferguson won that all the talk would still be about Ferguson and Habib eventually fighting. People couldn't get out of that now. Now people are seem to be kind of going more about Connor and Gaethje, Gaethje and Habib. You know, Habib is... Uh, you know, he's observing Ramadan at the moment, so I don't know where that allows him to fight, like when he's going to be available to fight. Um, usually he wouldn't compete in the summer. They're saying he will now, but who knows about that? Like, and Dana White's talking about Connor's, Connor's watching the broadcast last night to see if he's interested in competing. Like, I mean, 
I have an like I mean every movie makes is a power play, but I feel like that's that's worked out very well for him last night. The way the way the pieces fell into place, I feel. It's so important. Time is out. Uh, you need that time to unravel itself. That's what he was saying. Even about this whole bleeding pandemic stuff, it's like people are trying to figure it out as it's going. And sometimes you just have to pull up the handbrake and just wait and just see how it all yeah. ravels out on a uh, boogie. You know what I mean? Making decisions, I think, in that time as well can uh, can hinder you. And and everyone's like, please make a decision, but it's like it can it can go against you. You know what I mean? At them times. Yeah, I noticed a lot of it. Um, obviously, when Jackeray tested positive the other day, there was this huge reaction. Oh, you, you just have to pull it now and stuff. But I felt like that was a bit silly because, I mean, there was no way the UFC were going to pull it at that stage. I mean, at that stage, everyone's been in the fucking same room together anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, this is like we, we've we known since April, uh, very early on in March, that they were going to go as soon as they could. Um, so I just. It, like I mean, it was they were always going to press forward, and if they were testing people, they always knew that someone could p- test positive. Like that's just that's just the way it is. There was no like the there's no way the UFC were planning this and were going all right. We'll test them and then everything be grand. You know what I mean? Like they knew there would be a next step if if someone tests here, we do this, uh, and they did do that. And I mean, I guess it remains to be seen and um, if it's spread or not. But I mean, the way people are talking is like the UFC had no plan. If someone tested positive, it w- you were nearly guaranteed someone was going to test positive there. You know yeah. what I mean? And I, I have to say, hats off to them as well, pulling that off at this time. Because, like, like, to be able to do, like, you can imagine putting your chips in at a time like this, in a pandemic, trying to be like, I right, know what's going on. I know how to fix this. I know how to do this. And being confident in yourself, like, uh, you have to have a big pair of cojones to do something like that, Pizzi, don't you? But, yeah, and I think, like, I mean, look, whatever, regardless of what way you feel about Dana White. I mean, he made this the most talked about thing on the planet for about a month here. Like, I mean, that's what promoters are meant to do. They're meant to put their face out there. Like, look look back at the promoters we know, like Don King, all these guys, not good people. Nobody's saying, like, that fella, I want him to be the godfather of my children. But, but he's getting them people worked up. If you can make people care one way or the other, which everybody did about this fight, like, cared way more one way or the other, cared about it, this shouldn't happen blah, 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 the conversational points were so big that it was a huge event, and that was made through the friction Dana was causing every time he went on the TV, like, basically talking about coronavirus like it was a terrorist, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're not going to lie down for this thing. Like, it, it just made it huge. It trans, it was a, uh, it transit, it, it kind of uh, transcended the sport, as we like to say, with the likes of Connor and Ronda Rousey and stuff. That event seemed to transcend because nothing else is happening, right? Like, I mean, did you hear the radio? Like, o- Irish radio stations, it was on the, the news bulletins yesterday and everything about UFC. You know what? They're stuck when they have to be talking about UFC on the news yeah, in Ireland. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, step into my office, you slug. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, they're gonna have to negotiate that position on that now, aren't they? You know what I mean? It's like uh, yeah. going from like um, barbarians to like, oh look at these athletes over here. <laughs> <laughs> Would you think, um, like you know, based on the Gaethje and Ferguson for you know better than me, you know about weight cutting better than anyone. Is do you feel like the fact that Ferguson cut the weight? What was it? Three weeks ago, and then did it again. On Friday and fought, do you think that might have taken away from his performance or anything? Who is around him and poison him? You know what I mean? Like, you know, like there's times we kill anybody. I kill anybody. Fuck that fellow, man. One of them little jokes out of Toy Story. Shake it. Damn! One of them. Should I cut away? Should I not cut away? You should definitely cut away. <laughs> He's mental. Because, uh, like, what's going on there? You know, especially if you're thinking, like, like hold on. There's free islands coming up. There's all this stuff. Relax, son. That's what he would have been saying. There's loads of chances to prove yourself here. And you'll be able to jump in maybe three in a row. So save the weight cuts to what you really need them for. You know what I mean? Because there's no doubt your body is is taken back from a weight cut like that. You know? It's, uh, it's not nice. It's not, not a nice situation at all. You know? So I don't, It's I, trauma, I, right? Like, it's a traumatic, traumatic experience. Like Going over the fact that when he was cutting weight, coming back to it, like... The, the thought of cutting the weight was what what happened when the phone came on. You know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, man, I'm going to have to cut weight again. And, you know, I'd never like that position. And it kind of ruined you. I think that, that kind of ruined you in a way, you know? Um, Dominic Cruz and Henry Cejudo. Savage fight. I think it was about the leg kick for um, for, for Cejudo in the first uh-huh. 
And don't... I didn't even know he could do that. I didn't even know he could do that. <laughs> If you had been able to put a bet on what shot he was going to be dominating with, it probably wouldn't have been a leg. It probably would have been a double leg rather than a bleeding uh, uh, a leg kick. Yeah. Good leg kicks as well. About twenty thousand different types of leg kicks: inside, outside, across the front, skippings, left side. It's really good. Well, he's like you know you're fighting a race car when you're fighting Dominic Cruz, and he basically punctured the tires. Right? That that was the the way he went about it, and um, I I thought it was amazing. I, look. The stoppage, people are debating the stoppage today. After that knee, and, you know, there was 11 shots there. If he stopped it on shot eight or nine, nobody would be complaining. It was just as as he was stepping in, Cruz was on the way up. I don't think you can blame the ref there. He's trying to do the best with a fire. But do you hear all this shit now that's after coming out? Cruz is after saying that the ref smelled like drink and cigarettes oh, and everything. And, and that's... <laughs> wow. You know what he was doing? Did you see that man? <laughs> You know, what, what? No, no, I didn't say. Like booze and cigarettes. You know what he was doing, and it's Dominic. <laughs> Point you know. uh, I seen it one on this morning as well. We had a cracker, right? Dana White is getting rolled across the crowd as like Spider Man. No, <laughs> you've never seen Spider Man. He smashed up, and it's like Dana White after the UFC last night, and the crowd are moving <laughs> along, and he's just in his in his beliefs of in bits. <laughs> it's like it's amazing. Oh, stop, man! The best thing ever. But um. And then, then, uh, so who knows? Like, what happens there? It was like, it was like, um, you had the old school with um, Cerrone and Pettis. It was like, listen, we don't even care what happens here because the two of them can have a knock. They're gonna watch it, you know what I mean? And then you have the commentator going, hold me beer, you know what I mean? And jumping back in to fight uh, Cejudo. And then Cejudo just saying, after all this build up, now to be honest, that triple cringe thing, man, I felt like bleeding. I felt like messaging myself saying, mate, I'll fight you in the car park if you just stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's an animal, absolute animal. He is, you know what I mean. And he has the mind for it as well. Thirty-three years of age, and he's at the bell now. But what people won't realize as a as a double champion on an Olympic level thing, he's probably mm, as a millionaire. He's probably what one or two million in the bank. Yeah, I'd say I'd say he's earned a lot of money over those last the, the, all the title fights. That's when the money gets really you know big, and he's defended two divisional titles twice. So yeah, I'd say he's made enough money. But there's a part like I mean, the, as soon as he retired, I was like, this is a bargaining thing. This is nothing to do. It, it, like I mean, he's gonna be back because this is the problem that the UFC will have here. They, he vacates the title and they bring in. I think Piotr Jan should be the next lad to fight for the title. He's, he's fucking brilliant, the Russian, uh, the Siberian gangster. Yeah. He comes in, he fights for the title. Yeah, he's savage. Say he fights someone like Aljamain Sterling or um, Corey Sandhagen and Marlon Moraes. All of these guys, they're all brilliant. He could beat every one of those and he'll still need Zahudo to come back to verify him. As in, like, yes, he is the best. And that's when, if, if whoever holds that title next goes on a three fight, four fight run and defend that belt, that's when Cejudo can put all his chips on the table and say, you just need me back to make sure that that fella's the best in the world. You have no more challenges left. I've, I've defended a title of flyweight. I've defended a title of bantamweight. I'm an Olympic champion. I'll give him the best test of his life. They'll probably have to cough up a million whether you win or lose, flat rate for him to come back. And then if he comes back and wins it, that's a that's another bargain until for him straight away. Look, I'm out there doing it. So um, I, I have a feeling we're definitely going to see him again. And uh, that was one part I have to say, Paddy, when when he said that in a in a in a quiet arena and there was no reaction to it. That's when I was like, ah, oh, shit, man. He really needed the crowd there to to put that over him. You know what I mean? After a brilliant performance, controversial finish, it would have been either loads of cheers or loads of boos. But he doesn't carry it away. Like I, I always say, like people hate Cejudo. But they, they care one way or the other. And that's very important in a fight game. Like, even if you hate them and you despise them, that's emotion. And once you can make people elicit emotion about you, I think you are you you know what you're doing in combat sports, basically. You know, because nobody... Like, he, he came into this as an Olympic champion. I mean, even when he beat Demetrius Johnson, I know it was controversial. He still wasn't getting, like, I mean, a lot of respect. And then he makes up this... This kind of character, and everyone's like, "Oh, like nobody can, like you know, everyone has an opinion on him." So in a way, it was a stroke of genius. Yeah. Like you, you came with an inbuilt character. You, you don't know how lucky you were. You know what I mean? You're naturally, naturally That's exciting. Irish he wasn't. Huh? That's an Irish thing. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you see a lad outside a pub having a scrap, and I guarantee you, you can find a character for him. You know what I mean? If he does well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. 
you can like if you I, I don't know I won't, I won't get get attacked here. If you say say see two lads like uh, Henry Cejudo fighting outside a bar where he's from, it's probably like you're a douchebag. You're a douchebag. It's like the two of them are the same people in Ireland. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can imagine the slaggings going. You know what I mean? You know, you ever hear you get a fella get you see him? He's the one that gets a hoid and he's the one that jumps up and has the mouse mouth. Hold me back. Hold me back. You know what I mean? That's me. That's me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Um, it seems like we're all relying on this uh, fight island for the international fighters. So if you are still active, I think that's because the, the US visa situation is now they're only kind of giving visas to essential workers, so to speak. So doctors or government people or whatever. That's what Fight Island is. He's gonna get a place where you, there's no international restrictions on flight, so we can fly in all the international fighters to fight there. So I mean, that's what they're waiting for now. So it, it, that's going to be interesting, right? Because, I mean, if they thought that was controversial in Jacksonville, <laughs> flying people from all over the world onto some rented island to fight, that's going to be bananas. <laughs> to be honest, I don't, I don't think... I, like, how have they not thought about that uh, already, like, before? How have they not thought about buying an island, putting an airport on it, like, building an arenas on it, building the hotels on it, and that's it? You don't move anywhere else. Like, you think about the amount of money they move on the road, moving around... If you were a fight island that was in a place in the earth that you could just get to, not out of more or anything like that, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> like that. Somewhere freezing or something, you know what I'm saying? But it's a nice island that has sun all the time. We didn't, they should have done that before, shouldn't they? Yeah, they probably should, but that, that's what I'm hearing. A few fighters have said to me, the plan is that they can go there and stay there. Like, go and do your camp there. Go and, like, stay for a month afterwards if you want to. Like, we're going to, I think they're going to try and put some type of PI thing on it, like, you know? But, well, like, I mean, for you, right, every time I think about you fighting, you and the crowd at this amazing bond, right? Like, you're nearly, like, on the way and you're talking to them nearly, like, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, right? <laughs> and get in. No, but, I mean, how would you have felt about that, that kind of silence? Is that, like, do you, how, would that affect you? Like, do you ever draw from the crowd in, in respect to, like, what you're doing in there? Well, I remember walking out of Canada one time and um, the, the music dropped and I was like, and I was shy. <laughs> 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 it was shy, and uh, like even when I was um, uh, I remember being at the weigh-in, and like I was like, it was like being in someone's sitting room. That's what I felt like. I felt like I was on the telly looking into someone's sitting room. That's what I felt like. It was that far in, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. You don't think you would have liked it? I thought I would have liked it. Like I like, I like the buzz, I buzz myself up for it as well. But like I'd say, it's I'd say it's lonely. You know what I mean? The ultimate fighter, I'd say, would be close to it. Do you know what I mean? In a way where yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and all that stuff. It's not the same. It's not, and you can see it in some of the fights, to be honest. Let's be out straight. You can see it in some of them fights that just, where somebody moves really well, but when the crowd's there behind them, it's like, whoa. But when they were doing it last night, it was just, that was it. It was like, what was like, do you do that for? You know? Like, um, yeah. Say, um, Gaethje and Ferguson. So, like, sometimes Ferguson was doing some stuff where he, like, he turned around, but it just happened so slowly that you'd be like, what's he doing? You know? But, <laughs> When he does that stuff in a crowd for a room full of people, people are like, ah, you know, it's like, I don't know, it just adds on that effect. Like, I was thinking about that as well, Paddy. That uppercut he landed at the end of the second, that could be a fight changing moment with a crowd there going, ah, and Gaethje like getting up going, what the fuck is going on? What's going on? And I'm like, there's none of that here. Like, yeah. he just gets to go, but oh, yeah, Grant, no bother. And off we go. Like, I felt no momentum pick up for Ferguson there in the third round from that, really, you know? He nearly rocked his bleeding eyebrows off. Did you see that with that? Like, yeah, it them, it like, was a rocky, mom rocky moment up at court, wasn't it? And then for mm -hmm. Gates then to come back. I think the, the, the biggest tool in that fight was um, the left hook. So Beautiful. He needed to be thrown, he needed to be thrown maybe, uh, maybe a jab, left, straight, roll, and coming under that left hook. Like, and he didn't do one of it. Like, he literally... Threw his shots and then waited to get hit with that left hook every single time. Um, another thing I'd say, um, like I could, to be honest, I can see Connor. I could see Connor running through the bottom. That's just being out straight. Like I think if uh, Ting has a mad chin, uh, Ferguson, but like if he was getting hit, like if, he, if someone making the angles when he's turning and spinning, like he'd be getting hit worse than he was getting hit there. You know, uh, Gaethje was hitting him with good shots, but he was trying to take his head off. If he had been waiting for him to turn and, and clinch and making them angles and to the body into the head as well, like I think it would have been a different fight. And the same with Gaethje, I think um, Gaethje throws like 
he, he's like a machine. I think if he fed that machine, he'd probably just get bop, 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 you know, get that kind of bopping going. So uh, to be, there's, there's another there, another two fighters that I really do think that obviously Connor's going to meet one of them. But um, I could see it. I could see him killing the two of them, to be honest. The, the thing with Ferguson is, like, he usually puts such a pace on lads that they, you know, by round three, it's just like, oh, shit, they, you just see a big dump on them, and it just never got going from. It didn't feel like he had the same sauce in his shots as he usually would. But at the same time, as you're saying about Gaethje's left hand, I've never seen him land as well as that with his left. Like, I know he has a great left hand. I know he has, a great, uh, he has great leg kicks too, but he was... So good. That left hook was so smooth all night. Like even in round five, he was landing it really, really nicely. Like that's the best I've ever seen him perform. I'd say against that level of opponent, I think I think it's the best performance of his life. To be honest, Gaethje there last night. Yeah, no, we did. We think. I think. Um, and you know what? That's another thing as well. That um, that that was a big climax last night for a lot of fighters. You know what I mean? In that way where it's like, this is the do or die moment. It's hard to bring that every fight. You know, and people might say they will bring it, but bringing it and bringing it is another thing you know like uh, like I'm willing to die in their kind of action and I think last night he, he had it but it's hard to bring that every single fight you know what I mean so I think everyone had a climax last night and then now we're going to see hopefully rolling forward with the next few events that um, especially into that fight Ireland um, it's exciting times here man here can you imagine being Daniel Cormier being the heavyweight champion and then watching Francis Ngannou just fucking do that to Jairzinho Rosenstruck and going I might have to fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. He looks like, man, Francis Ngannou looks like he's a different species to the rest of us, man. I've never seen a person built like that in my life. It's you know, mental. Yeah, man, Rosenstruck is like a K1. Like, he, he's fought, like, he's a seriously high level striker. He just got, like, between, from that and what Francis did to Alistair over him, I mean, it doesn't matter how technical you are against a fella that size, doesn't it? Like, I mean, even the way he's coming in, he's like, ah! Like it's just if he hits you, it's game over. It's oh, terrifying. Yeah, I love to see an essay on what happens when people actually the connection happens. You know, like that film or the game. I don't know what program that used to be. Um, was it uh, After Days or something? Would be like it was right then. I knew that I should have went left. <laughs> you know what I'm it just pauses like. Uh, I'd love to see uh, uh, all of Francis and uh, knockouts is like wait, what the guy is thinking before it, and then when he gets hit, pause. And <laughs> what exactly what? It was right then that I could feel my left toe twiggling. Nothing else in my body was walking. You know what I mean? Because like, oh when you get hit with them shots, Matt, like, now obviously I would never get hit with a shot like that because I'd be dead. Do you know what I mean? But like, with a good shot like with That's all of us. Yeah. <laughs> just a ghost of you. That's what it was. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like you didn't even exist. He got hit and then he just didn't exist. Um, yeah, so like, when you get hit with them sh shots like that, you can taste that copper in your mouth. I'd say, I don't know what you taste with him, man. You know what I mean? I'd say you taste new bleeding materials. Do you reckon if if they uh, fought again, Stipe and him, it would be a different story? Or do you yeah. think Stipe could do him again? Uh, I think I like Stipe, you know what I mean? I just have so I much... Do as well, yeah. he's probably, he, as a person, he's probably one of my favourite fighters uh, in the US. Probably in the world, to be honest. In the way of like... Uh, yeah, the way, he, well, the way he carries himself, man. He's a... He's a proper dude, isn't he? Like the way you know what I mean? Like jumps back into into service and stuff like that, and just you know, like has, has been in situations where I think fighting is like, like you, you get hurt in here, but if I'm running into proper buildings, you know what I mean? So it's just um, I don't, I, I think he's 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 a true heart, you know what I mean? True soul. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's mad though. Like, I mean, he's actually out there, like on the front line working, and Dana White's like, ah, if he doesn't fight soon, we're gonna have to take that toilet off. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> the poor fucker, will you give him five minutes? Like, <laughs> yeah, he's probably reading this in a fire truck before he runs into a building, you know what I mean? As I said, <laughs> listen, Dana's ruthless, but he has to be as well, you know? He has to be. It's, 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 it's hard to be in any situation, I think, where you could just be uh, you could be walked all over if you must. Do you know what I mean? And uh, like I think anybody, think of uh, think of the, the, the people leading the, the, the pandemic. Think of the people that are like behind the, the limes and all of them type of things. I think if you're gonna get to that position, people are gonna judge you, slag you uh, <laughs> from their sofa while they're having that their, their dinner, you know what I mean? And it's like for all people, I might be one of them as well. I I, I throw a bit of stick, you know what I mean? But uh, it's the way it works. That's all we can do in this, like, in fairness, like, I mean, I, I don't, it's not like I'm like, how are people going online? They've been fucking nothing better to do, to be honest. Like, but do you think it will be, like, that's what I was kind of debating all last night, like, 
you could see how much this meant to all the other sports that they were putting on as well. It wasn't just them. I know some boxing promoters have given them a bit of shit about it, but the NFL would have been watching that, the NBA, all of these big sports um, organizations would have been watching that last night. And I know it was controversy at the start. A lot of people still very upset with Dana White for, for doing this. But right now, on Sunday, the day after the fight, I, I think he could come away from this looking very, very good, to be honest. That's just the way the cookie grumbles here. Like that, I think he is Donald Trump on the star of the broadcast on the pay-per-view. Do you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? What is going on? This mad shit, Paddy, that we used to have to go to GA halls with five different lads we knew to watch you fight or whatever. Donald Trump's on the pay-per-view now. Like, that's, that is mental. Like, but, like, take... Take any kind of political viewpoint away from that and just look at it for what it is. The President of the United States of America is on the start of a broadcast going, we need our sports back. Dana White is basically like, this guy's an American hero for doing this. Like, that is mental. Like, if you're going to tell me that doesn't have a, a knock-on to the mainstream, that that's huge. You can't really get more, like, validation than that, can you? Oh, oh Jez, I don't know how now. Same lad was telling people they inject bleeding. <laughs> No, yeah, I don't. I, I don't, I'm no way. Uh, I would not be a big Trump fan at all. But that's still mad seeing that. All we try to do is concentrate on what goes on in Ireland. To be honest, you know what I mean? Because we've got enough of our own problems, as they say. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Where people are like, oh, but I'm like, now listen, you sort out them problems, and we sort out these problems because that's what's going on at the moment. But Jack Array gets like right? Jack Array uh, tests positive for it. And there's videos of him around, like we're doing the boys, you know, like before the weigh-ins. Right now. Like, we don't really know the scale of things. In two weeks, don't even find out that, like, you know, lots of other people got it there. Then it's a fucking disaster. You're dead right. Like, this could absolutely go one way or the other. We're on a very a delicate balancing act at the moment there, man. <laughs> it's a close one, I'm telling you now. And, uh, and I think, and the thing is, we're all in the same situation. We're all in the kind of, um, we, don't, we don't know. Like, even the experts don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, we had, we had a doctor on last week. We did. We had, um... Uh, Jerome Fennell, so he's a disease um, a specialist from Catalan Hospital, and he was talking. Mm-hmm. Just like in the local scene here, um, obviously there's, there's there's so much division. I think in between what goes on and like you know, like we always saying that what we need is we need a community approach towards this. So we need a community approach towards reopening the gyms, um, towards helping the smaller gyms as well, because some gyms are not going to come through this. And unfortunately, I won't say unfortunately, but we need to fight people as well. Do you know what I mean? So everyone, I think. I think it's important that all of the clubs come together and um, have some sort. So on Thursday at half eight in the morning, if anyone wants to jump onto this as well, message me and I'll, I'll get the girl to um, add you into the email. Um, she, so we talked about the podcast last week about an, a, a united approach to coming back to this, you know what I mean? Obviously staying inside uh, guidelines and all this, but making sure that we all do it, you know what I mean? So we have a united front and an idea of like, what are we doing? People have a, a way to go and kind of find some information and from some um, ideas, if you must, you know what I mean, to what way would you do it, you know? So we had, uh, as I said, Jerome was on last week and running some ideas by him regarding, like, three people training together and if one gets sick, they all, uh, they're they all off, the whole three of them people and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to have a meeting. We are on Thursday at half eight about it. Any club that wants to jump into it and just throw some ideas, it's not official, it's not some meeting of a board or whatever, this kind of thing. It's literally just a load of boys and girls and men and women just meeting and trying to figure out something about all of this so where do you think they like if, if the Irish scene was on its knees in a way like I think we were actually getting the life back into it there where are we at yeah. now jeez Paddy you're dead right we were talking about this like I mean if t- it felt like 2020 could be a magical year for Irish MMA to be honest you know starting around January with Connor kicking it off back to winning ways putting his best foot forward you know um you know, being the guy we know him to be against Cerrone and going there and get the business done, becoming a winning fighter again. You had Reese McKee ready to win that Cage Warriors title in, in Belfast and then hopefully get signed to the UFC. That's the way things were looking. You know, it, it was going to be a... Yeah, look, the Bellator fights were even huge. Peter Queeley was getting a massive opportunity against Pitbull. James Gallagher against Kyle Eleanor was finally going to happen. You know, Liam McCarr took a great step forward to, you know, to become the person that the mainstream kind of female for it we thought she could be. There was a, there was a lot of things happening in Irish MMA. So it's very disappointing. I could, fe- I could feel like almost, you know, that Cage Warriors cast. Cage Warriors obviously being the, the feeding ground for the UFC. I thought there was a lot of guys there looking very good as well that 
this could be the next generation. I told you for years it was never going to happen again. You were like, maybe it could. Maybe it could. You could have marched into August, though. You reckon it could have been with that? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. Look, you undersell what you were. Like, I mean, you, you, it's hard for you to see what you were because you were one of the guys, right? And I always tell you, it was like Beatlemania. You know what I mean? It was mental. It was not, there was nothing ever like that before. There will never be anything like it again. But this was at least resembling it with the UFC intentions, you know what I mean, in terms of that. And that was very exciting. And now there's no show in Belfast. There looks like there's no UFC Dublin. It's, I mean, it seems like it's all resting on the shoulders of Connor once again to come out here and do some magic dirty, you know? Yeah, it's like, no, and, and it, is, it does always fall like that as well. And like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean in that way and it's hard in a way that like people are going to be like no one's going to want to put our uh, like as I said like if it was a much more united approach in the community it would just so much easier for us to be able like say we well, hold on we'll put all of the shows together and we'll do one show or do two shows two nights in a row even where we can do two cards where everybody puts a few euro in on the event and everybody tries to secure one location and you know because we don't want a situation where you come back and all of a sudden it's like 10 shows are trying to happen at the same time and like one show was not able to happen because, I don't know, someone someone got flu or, you know, because say a situation now, right? here's, here's a hypothetical situation. I said this to me, mate. Yeah, there's a great poker app. Can you check out that poker app, the poker faces? No, I don't, I don't even know how to play poker, mate. <laughs> well, it's free. It's free. So, but you can play with your mates on it. So every Saturday, me and my mates play on it. Um, is, like, I'm not messing like it gets you that laugh in your stomach where you know you're laughing with your mates but like high level abuse being thrown and it's just brilliant <laughs> it's brilliant it it's been it's been ma- you were just talking about there the way you guys are doing things I think that's blown me away man just the the, the way that you you guys the gym owners have adopted uh, adapted to the situation you are in like that setup you have there in the in the cage I see you and Dean doing less from there I think that's amazing you know the fact like if this had happened 10 years ago you would have been screwed basically you know what i mean there would have been no way you would have been making uh-huh. tapes we would have been recording tapes <laughs> of people's houses we would have found a way we would have we would have found a way but um how long did it take you to put that in place um a week and a half week and a half i think two weeks you know what i mean see the thing is right is that this is this is the this is the biggest part of it all and this is what people are not uh understanding you know that a lot of the people that were trained, we probably about 300 members that would have been here, you know what I mean? And some people are like, some people need it, like, like they need a breakfast in the morning, you know what I mean? Like, and I don't yeah. mean, like, they need it because, uh, I know I do. Mental yeah, mental health. And like, so you'd, you'd have some people like that would maybe be, I don't know, would have been fond of a gargle or something like that. I went down that road, then all of a sudden they've substituted jiu-jitsu with that. And they don't need that feeling to fill that hole anymore, you know? But uh, that's, to me, that's what it's about, you know? It's, now, it's about obviously keeping the building afloat and stuff like that and all as well. But um, we'll survive. But some people, some clubs are not going to survive through this PT. And um, I, I, I don't want to see that. Like, I don't want to see that as an opportunity. I want to see that as like um, a, as a loss to the community. You know what I mean? The loss to kind of um, the Irish building that we've been doing for so long. Because it's been everyone building. And, and sometimes some people like people and don't like people and all. Like, if there was ever a time where everyone could just like be like, listen. Give yourself a clatter and let's just get sorted with this and, and fix this little island. It's an island, you know what I mean, of, of MMA and make sure that it all goes together. And, and people have discussions in a way that, like, you don't have to like people. You just don't, I'm starting to realise that. Like, you don't. No, you're right. You're right. Before I, before I even jump on the, the poker thing I was about to tell you about, yeah. Before I went on, I'll answer that question for you now. But, uh, <laughs> last night when we're looking at the screens, everybody is scalped, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, <laughs> Have you have you gone for the the old shaver yet? Have you have you been tempted to to go zero all over? We we, we rolled back here. I am now. I'm going back to the shoulders. This is going to be down to like here by the time i rolling back away for you. You know, so be no, glorious. We couldn't, we couldn't shave me beard on me hair. Like, you know what I mean? This is a time to this is a time to grow here and beards. You know what I mean? Sitting in your house, everyone should come out like. And this is, well, we cut our hair because we have to go out into society. You know. But um, no, going to the council and stuff like that, I just, I, I rock up and whatever I, I need it, to be honest, you know what I mean? It attracts you and all, but I have to, there's something I am starting to learn, right, is that I am a public representative, um, I'm trying to watch my language, I'm trying to watch this, but um, what some people don't realise is, you know, like, they used to cheer me in a cage, punching people, do you know what I mean? They don't, they forget that, do you get what I mean? 
And then when you're on the other side, it's like, how dare you? It's like, <laughs> if you understand, like my nickname is the hooligan when I was fighting, you know? Like, that doesn't make me a bad person, but it definitely doesn't make me the most articulated person there. Do you get what I mean? But I have a good heart and I have a good, I have a good work ethic to put behind and I'm willing to work, you know? So that's what I put in behind, the one foot in behind the other then, you know? So, um, and the rest of them, like the people screaming at you are, are, are saying what they would be saying would be, um, would, would, wouldn't scream at like corruption, wouldn't scream at like uh, uh, hypocrisy and all of this stuff that goes on, like, you know, like, so say that, like, yeah, the other day we had Leo, uh, Leo Radka said that, um, that the, the virus might have been here sure in, uh, in January. All right. Sound last week said that and I was mental. I said it before, and it was 41 degrees in January. Three weeks I was sick for, in a bad way, like the whole house was. If that was now, the panic would make me think we were all going to die. And that's it, because you've got to be thinking, shamey. I'm like, we're not going to make it. That's what I would have been thinking, Pizza, you know? Look, I was, up me, I was at my granddad's grave yesterday, and he died at 70, right? And that would have been young, but when I was young, that was old, you know? And now, like, even yeah. people that are saying, like, everyone that's dying is in their 80s and stuff like that, it's like, that doesn't mean that it's less... But it means that the strategy needs to be different, I think, you know? Yeah. Like, in the idea of, like, we've seen this coming with lots of elderly people in Italy dying and stuff like that, and it's coming at us slowly. Like, our plans should have been, like, on the 10th of March, um, the government asked the the, 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 the the care homes and the hospitals to lift the restrictions that they had put into place voluntarily on their own uh, for visiting. So they kind of interfered on the opposite way where the hospital came in and said, no, no, lift them. We don't need them for March. Like. And it's like we closed a few days later in a way. So Those if, such I, tragedies, man. Them, the nursing homes, aren't they? It's just oh, it's devastating. Who's watching that coming forward? Should we not have put mm. them millions in towards really cocooning, like moving? Now, not moving the people out of them homes because I understand that that's their home. But moving specialists in that are uh, contamination specialists, um, you know, like uh, infection specialists, disease, the transfer of how it transfers around, um, plans on how to segregate uh, wards and stuff like that in it, um, or even move some of the care homes up into CE West, like that was that was booked, you know what I mean? Or some of the private hospitals that were there for people that were able to move, you know? Um, I don't think we're hearing enough about that situation, to be honest, PT. It's devastating, man. That, that's some of the saddest things I've heard. Like, you know, people, people at that age, you know, dying without people around them and stuff like that. It's just, it's really fucking heart-wrenching for me, man, to hear that stuff. It's it's desperate. Some really horrible stories are going to come out of this that we haven't heard. You okay. know what I mean? Like, some de devastating stuff. Like, I, I can just imagine 10 years from now, we'll be looking back at this and, you know, I always find, like, that, that distance, you know, right now being in it, we can't really grasp the scale of this. But, in, you know, when we're looking back this on reeling in the years, as you used to always say to me about your fight career, you know, we won't know how big it is until we look back in it in many years. And I think it's nail on the head with this situation as well, Paddy. As, um, I'll leave you on this anyway, but um, for, for people out there as well, because um, just because we're in this a long time and we're all getting complacent, there is kind of keep them, keep that head up on. There's people lonely out there. I, I know somebody... Um, one of my close friends is working on receiving phone calls, so um, like uh, occupational support in a way. And she says the amount of phone calls that she has received of elderly people considering suicide um, is Jesus Christ. I, I, the the words in between that and like even elderly people sitting in the house so afraid now, so worried, and to be thinking of something like that. You know what I mean? I can I can't even imagine what that coming ahead. So it do, it's important the onus is on us all to. To make sure we are checking in with our neighbours and checking in with people, because although even I think even people that are a little bit older, they they don't like to bother people. They don't like to um, I don't know be a burden if you must. Do you know what I mean? Like so, they don't mm -hmm. even like to say, "Listen, I need help. I need I need to come in and talk. I need this or that." You know, it's um, so I think it's it's on us to make sure that we kind of I don't know don't be too pushy. Obviously, you get arrested. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Try and try and listen. I can come around, I can help, I can I can I can show you how to use Skype, I can like something like this to somebody in that house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a portal to the world, you know. So it's um I think it's on us all to kind of look that up and and maybe hook them up with some UFC if they're into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you heard of Foyd Island, lads? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna love this. You're gonna fucking love this. <laughs> you're gonna hook up a Foyd Island club, you know, on the eighties every great. The woman I coming back. I fucking love Justin Gagey. <laughs> <laughs> now, mate, now, 
Do you know what, Pete? It's an absolute pleasure having a chat with you. And I get, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll do this again, I'm sure, over the next little while, I'm sure then. Oh, man, any time, any time. Always happy to get on and have a chat with you, Paddy. A legend of the game, of course. There's a few fights coming up and stuff like that, so I'm sure we'll have a bit of a... Uh, a bit of stuff to break down in between us. You're the, you're, you're the no shame. Uh, I was trying to do the word here without Robin being here. Um, <laughs> for sports analysis, PT Carter. <laughs> Just don't ask me about anything else other than MMA. And I'll be like, <laughs> maybe? I don't know. What about that lava rock in the background there? Are you going, are you going there? Spiritual ones? No, someone gave that to me at a Bellator event. Bellator? Someone gave that to me. Walking around with My- I couldn't bring a fucking bottle of water into the bleeding venue. Someone just hands me this halfway through the thing. It's, uh, no, it's been there ever since. Yeah, yeah. It's, they, they, yeah man. Check them out. Do a bit of bleeding with one of them on. And anybody at home as well, you've seen this lamp, get one of them. Click on the, 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 the Neil, uh, Neil, Bleed with Neil. And I'm not missing. Best thing ever, PT. Just a bit of bleeding. Listen, wait and I tell you, man. Wait and I tell you. Carl Pendrick uses it for a different thing altogether. He was on to me. As soon as I got that at the event, they put up a picture of me holding it. And he was like, great for the bedroom, them yokes, PT. That fella's a door board. That lad, <laughs> Carl Pendrick. Call the waxer. Call the waxer. Don't hang up there, because I won't record. We have to hang up. So that was no shame. Um, I hope you enjoyed the UFC day this week. Um, I certainly did. It felt like back in the old school days where there was only one on, um, one on a month or one on every two months, and you were like sitting there biting your nails, uh, getting ready for it to come on. So, um, I hope you enjoyed it like I enjoyed it. Um, we're gonna try and break down some more of the events. Um, like always, if you have any feedback or anything you would like us to it like us to have a chat about, um, feel free. And if you feel like we we made any mistakes or any corrections, don't worry. We're all human. Uh, you can pass it on to us and we'll try and get that information better but here at No Shame we try to have that information uh, as accurate as possible um, and I'm starting to find these days even no matter how much your, your information is accurate um, people will find a way to be able to fight against it um, look after yourself